Hello, this is Ladislav Smola. I'm a Red Hat engineer, and today I will show you the new features in ManageNQ around networking and topology view. So we have a new top level tab networks in here with all the networking sections, the, all the inventory we can collect from all the providers. Let's start with the topology view to have the high level view of all the providers. So you can see it's quite a lot of data and my monitor isn't that big. So let's just filter it out and check the basic relations. We are interesting, interested in VMs and connection to subnets and taggings. So we can see we have a two tags that, that are connecting our providers and they are collecting the subnets. So let's pick them up. There is also connection to VM. Okay, so let's look at the tags. This is environment prod, so this is our production environment. So you can see all the subnets under production environment here. And this is environment dev. So you can see basically the whole development environment here. And it's tagged across providers. So you can see VMs in that environment from Azure, OpenStack and Amazon. Okay, so let's look at uh, other relations in the topology view, but let's drill down into just one provider, for example, OpenStack for now. And here you, ha you have a link to the topology view. Right, so it's much smaller. So let's go one by one to show all the relations. So we have seen this. With this we, we can nicely see how all the VMs are connecting to subnets. So we are using mainly just one subnet. That is not very good. We can see the security groups that are being used. So they are interconnected a lot, which is not very good. So this subnet seems pretty clean with all the VMs under one security group. we can see uh, cloud networks so let's see this one this cloud network is called network private it has two subnets and here we have network called network private free and it has one subnet and one vm in there okay so on top of that we can show network routers so you can see this those two subnets are connected to a router called, called router and that router has public network as its gateway it has a public subnet so this subnet is used for generating floating IPs and it has another router connected to that which connects another two another two subnets and one of them is our other subnet with VM right so a public network two routers connected to that and subnets connected to those routers and on top of that we can show also floating IPs so those floating IPs are connected to the public network and then to individual VMs. Right, so this VM has this floating IP and it's connected to this network. Or we can just hide the networks and just see which VMs has the flight floating IP and which not. Maybe cleaner to get rid of everything else. And just see it like that. We have subnets, VMs, and floating IPs connected to them. And with this we can see the floating IPs and the connections to the, to the public network. Right, the last connection is cloud tenants. So we can browse what tenants are used for the VMs. 
we can see all the VMs we have are under one tenant right now. So all of that is also visible in table views and we can easily drill down from the topology. So here we can see all the relations of a cloud tenant and here are all the relations to networks. So we can see networks, subnets, routers, security groups, floating IPs and network ports. Okay, so let's start with the list of instances and we will click through from instance through all the relations. So let's pick, for example, this one. Okay, so in the instance we can see which network it belongs to, which subnets it, it is connected to, the network routers it is connected to, security groups that are used, floating IPs that are associated, and network ports that are on the VM. Okay, so let's go through the network ports. We can see it has one network port with this MAC address. The network port has one fixed IP and one cloud subnet. With IPv6 we can have actually multiple subnets associated to one network port and it has one floating IP. So with the detail of the floating IP we can see the floating IP address, the fixed IP address it is associated to and the instance it is associated to. So we can go back to network port and let's click through subnets. So we can see it has one subnet then on the subnet we can see all the instances connected to this subnet and under which cloud network the subnet is and network router that is connected to the subnet so let's just see the cloud network it has two subnets and two network routers connected so let's go back to the subnet, we can order it by number of instances. So we can see only one subnet is actually failed. Right, so from the subnet let's go uh, to the router. So this subnet is connected to this router. Right, and we can see again all the instances connected to this router through subnets. All the subnets connected to this router and external gateway of the router, which is the public network. All right, so again, we can check all the subnets connected to this router. So those are still the same subnets under the one network. So let's go through the network, through the router to the public network. Right, so the public network, these are the instances that are actually connected through routers to the public network. These are the network routers connected to this public network. And this is the subnet of the public network. So this is just used for generating of the floating IPs. All right. So we can see a list of all instances connected to the public network. You can see not all has some floating IP associated. For example, these three doesn't have any floating IP associated. Okay, so that is basically all the relations, all relations we are showing and that you can click through. And we can see the same for all the other providers, not just the OpenStack. Not all relations exist. For example, the Azure and Amazon doesn't have network router. So let's just quickly see that the Azure is almost the same. You can go through just Azure topology, disable all the things, and we can just see the VMs that are connected to subnets. You can again drill down to any element that is there. And that is basically all I wanted to show. Thank you for your attention.